Great! Not a good way to start the video. Greetings, Earthlings! Today I'm back with a review of a microphone that I had never heard of before. So today we're looking at this guy, the MikeTech T89, and that is spelled M-I-K-T-E-K. -E this is a super cardioid handheld dynamic microphone, and if you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around $100. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the TI-89. <laughs> Why do I say TI? This isn't a f calculator. <laughs> But anyways, I have the microphone connected directly to the 18i20 with the gain set at about 3 o'clock. I will of course do no post processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. I almost made it outside. First off, you do get a zippered storage bag, although I do want to point out that it doesn't provide too much padding. You will, of course, get the microphone, a microphone mount, which does have the 5 8 to 3 8 inch stand adapter, and some documentation. As far as the build quality of this thing, it feels absolutely incredible and on par with Shure and Electro Voice microphones. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill, which is what you would expect out of a stage dynamic microphone. It feels really good in the hand and it weighs in at around 0.65 pounds or 295 grams. Then, as far as the specs, this microphone has a super cardioid polar pattern, that's a standout feature, a frequency response of 50 hertz up to 19 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 57 decibels, and an impedance of 300 ohms. All right, now I am spinning around the T89 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We will go ahead and move around to 180 degrees. It should be very dead from back here. Then we will go around to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front. Because this is a handheld dynamic microphone, I'll pass it back and forth to see how it does at handling noise. Of course, we are going to check out the plosive rejection, so please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect of this thing. Three inches off of the microphone with the mic pointed at the corner of my mouth and this is how it sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, dose feet away from the microphone, and four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you elite gamers, now I am typing on the DAWs keys. Now, just for comparison's sake, right now I am speaking into the T89, and this is how the microphone and audio is sounding. And now I have the SM58 at the exact same position with the same gain setting. I will have to boost this a little bit more in post, but since this is such a standard microphone, I thought I would throw a very quick comparison so you can hear how it compares to something that you'll see on pretty much every stage. <laughs> I've got nothing in my brain Won't you tell me what to sing Cause I am desperate again Won't you please, please help me Why did I pronounce that so weird? It's me, not me Seriously, I've run out of things to say. Please help. Tell me what to sing about. I got nothing left. The tank is dry. 
All right, so I'm actually pretty impressed with this microphone, especially at the $100 price tag. And first up in terms of pros, this microphone did a really nice job at background noise rejection due to the super cardioid polar pattern. It also had a very nice full low end and a lot of detail and clarity without sounding nasally, which was really apparent when you compared it to the SM58. And it just feels like it's built really well and will stand up to the rigors of being used in a live environment. And then as far as cons, the plosive rejection on this thing really wasn't that great and left a little bit to be desired, which is the exact same story when it comes to the handling noise. I have heard worse, but I would like it to be better. It still picked up a bit too much handling noise in my opinion. And lastly, the microphone leans on the side of being a little bit sibilant, which you can really hear when I start to say S's. S -s -s -s. Really starts to get a little bit painful there. So those are my cons. And now as far as my overall thoughts, on the electric guitar, the low end seemed a little bit loose. It didn't have as tight of a response as I would like, and it was also a little bit overpowering. And the top end of this microphone is also very prominent, leading to the microphone sounding a little bit V-shaped on the guitar. But that's not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. I actually really liked it on the electric. Then on the acoustic guitar, it's a somewhat similar story, but I think that the low end was a little bit too prominent in my opinion. You could easily resolve that by throwing on a high pass filter, but I would just personally prefer to pick a microphone that doesn't require as much fiddling with the low end in post. Next up for singing, this microphone had a very clear and very detailed tone that really will cut through a mix, but at no point did it really pop out and sound shrill, and at the same time, it has a very full and warm low end, which I really liked on my voice. And lastly, for spoken word, the microphone offers a very, very bright tone, which is standard for mics with a neodymium magnet, and it does give you a somewhat V-shaped sound, especially when you get close to the microphone and start to engage that proximity effect. And to wrap up, would I recommend this microphone? Yeah, I think it's a really cool option at that $100 price point. The super cardioid polar pattern will be really good for noisier environments, especially live situations with all the other instruments on stage. And this microphone gives you a much more modern and detailed sound when compared to a classic, more vintage sounding microphone like the SM58 due to that somewhat recessed mid sound that you get out of this thing. But as I already mentioned, the microphone didn't do an amazing job at rejecting handling noise, so if you plan on hand holding it, I would definitely practice having delicate fingers. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Hold it really lightly. That's what I mean. And also, the microphone left a bit to be desired in terms of plosive rejection and wind rejection, so I would 100% recommend getting a windscreen if you are picking this up. All right, well, that is going to do it for today. So if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down and let me know in the comments down below what you didn't like about it. Did you not like a test? Did you think I was being biased? What didn't you like? If you want more videos just like this, you can subscribe by clicking that logo down beneath me and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you later. Bye.